buying. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency and blockchain aggregate news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. It's going to be smoking. It's going to be swearing. So look, if you don't like those things, well, you have been warned. So look, look, I'm here. I come in three. Look, look, two. You've been warned. One. Bang. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. My name is Shamari Clark. Welcome. Now. All right. So we got a great show for you today. Oh, we got to start out first, though. All right. So let me tell you the stories, but then we have an update. Ripple on boards, 20x rapid customers. They say, uh, you know, that's what they're saying. That's what they've tweeted. They didn't mention any names, <laughs> but we'll read them. Oh, wow. We read the story. And like I told you, you can only move money around Philippines and Mexico. So, I mean, Garlinghouse says it. And so I'm going to read it to you from his own lips. Look, now, VeChain. Yes, of course, another onboarding. So they've onboarded some sort of an Australian. Mo okay, I'll just read the title and then we'll get there when we get there. VeChain moves into Chinese and Australian wine. So there's some super fancy Australian company. Bang, they're going to use them for the authentication. Then we're going to read this other thing about China's stance on crypto. So we've been talking about it lately. So we already know, like we sort of went through the things yesterday, you know. I mean, we've talked about it here, you know. They did the infographic and all that. But the guy talks about a little bit more, more stuff. And so we're going to talk. I don't agree with everything he says, but whatever, man. It's a new show and so. I don't have to agree with anything. But first, this just in. This just in. Binance, know your client stuff. Know your client was hacked. Yep. One of the brothers showed me right now. Right now tonight. So I'm going to show you that. We'll do the market overview. And then we'll get to the Binance hack. And then we'll do the stories, okay? All right. So let's begin how we begin, brothers. Just do our normal thing. But so, but we're going to start with the Binance story, okay? All right. Bang. Let's get to the beginning. I am so fucking fuming angry right now. You don't even believe I wanted to show you guys some other shit, but I'm so pissed off right now. I'm not, I'm not, I won't be able to. I won't be able to do it. <laughs> I am fucking fuming right now. Um. All right, let's do a refresh. Come on. All right, I'm gonna try to cheer up though. I am so pissed off, man. Oh my gosh. Like, there's pictures. I'll show you. I'll show you. Hold on, man. Let's do the overview and then we'll go. Fuck. All right. Oh, yeah, let's do a refresh. All right, Bitcoin is at 11,572. Last night we were at 12,171. So what is that, about $500 drop? <clears throat> $500, drop there. Something like that. 600. All right. Yeah, yeah, normal Bitcoin movement. All right. Top 10 of the day, brothers. Come on. I got to cheer the fuck up, man. I am pissed right now, brothers. You don't understand how angry I am seething with anger right now. I wanted to show you guys trades and shit. I am so pissed off right now. Fuck. We'll get to it maybe tomorrow or something, though. Show you guys. All right, let me not keep you down. Let me, let's cheer up and let's do this thing. Look, look, top 10 of the day, brothers. Usual suspects of the day, brothers, yes. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Binance Coin, Tether, EOS, Bitcoin SV, and Monero. Bang! Look, look. Mark moves of the day, brothers. Well, it looks like all single digits down, really. Mm. Single digits down. Yeesh. Well, there's one up. All right. Single digits up, single digits down. Usual story. Yeah. Single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up to single digits down. Single digits up to single digits down. Where are you, V-Chain? Bucking the trend. Hmm. Single digits up to single digits down. Yes. Two single digits up. Two single digits down. Now, let's look at who lost money today. If you see anything in here you like, you go get it because it is on sale, brothers. Yes. And there looks like a lot of sales going on tonight. Yeah, you need. Look, look, top 10 losing day, brothers. Digibyte, Best Chain, Egrisha, Hypercash, Nexo, Bitcoin, Ren, ABC Coin, Theta, and Bitcoin SV looks to make money today. Look, look. Not many. Yeesh, not much anyway. Look, look. Top 10 winners of the day, brothers. Lisk, Aurora, Lambda, Tezo, Selectronium, Japan Content, Vision, Verge, BitTorrent, and who will be talking? Yes. All right. All right, maybe this is starting to work a little bit. <laughs> 
<clears throat> or maybe me talking is just making me forget what I'm about to talk about. It's pissing me off right here like a motherfucker. I can't believe that shit. All right. Told Mark Cap of the day, brothers. If you're in 2.7 billion. And yesterday, whoa, what happened there? Oh, did I touch something? <laughs> well, obviously. All right, hold on. Let's go back. All right, all right, hold on. All right, and yesterday we were at, yeesh, that was a big jump or a big drop. Yesterday we're at 317.3, so we went down 15 billion today. And uh, let's look at total volume of the day, brothers. <sighs> 63 billion even. And yesterday we're at 69.1, so we went down $6.1 billion. Hence, the plunge in market cap and so normal behavior. All right, let's get to this now. Binance was hacked like right now tonight. It is now 4.44 a.m. I was sitting down here to do the show at about 3.20 this, uh, tonight, this morning, when I get this shit right here from one of the brothers. Justin, yeah, 3.38. I was just getting, sitting down here to do this. Bang! How do I see this shit? Everyone's KFC info is on Telegram. Find your Binance coin. So you press the button. Beep. You go to Telegram. So I went there. So this is the channel, but I don't know where the pictures are, like, and I don't know how to use Telegram, to tell you the truth. Ooh. Oops, excuse me, guys. <laughs> Ooh. And, uh, yeah, I don't actually know how to use this. So, But they're here, and so I'll show you one of the brothers, Justin. Bang, here's some old lady and some old man right here. That's their Binance shit. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and, of course, Ronk has... My instinct is to short B and B. You damn right it is. <laughs> you short the shit out that motherfucker. But um, yeah. So there's a picture of an old lady and old man. So your stuff is out there. Um, so it says, but Justin said the darkness. Justin, he said so far it looks like the data is only between the 23rd and 24th of February of 2018. But who knows? Um, so. That's what Justin's looking into. That's what he's saying so far. That's the last word I heard. So, but there it is, man. Look at that old lady and that old man right there. There's your know your client stuff. So go to Telegram. I don't know if you guys know how to use it, then yeah, go look and see if your shit's there. And then, so the other thing is that, oh, and so hold on though. Yeah, so and then bang. Hold on, I'm supposed to read you something. Yeah, there we go. So here it is. Here's the article. This came out like two seconds ago. <laughs> I, I was looking around, right? Because I wanted to read it to you, right? read you something you know just you know i don't want to make it i like I, I say stuff to you but i want you to see it in proof you know i want you to see the proof so anyways look all right so thousands of binance users kyc data reportedly hacked ceo Xiao urges not to fall for fud well it ain't no fucking fud because my buddy right here has some old lady and some old fucking woman on my fucking twitter feed so it ain't fud this ain't fud this is real i don't know these fucking old lady and old man and even if I did, they wouldn't be sending me their shit like this, right? It ain't FUD. It's real, all right? So, thousand, and so, <laughs> all right, so let's read. Um, the KYC, know your customer data of thousands of Binance users have been reportedly hacked, and the IDs are, the IDs are being posted in a Telegram chat group. A Twitter user said in a tweet on Wednesday, oh, Oh, and what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll post a link to the room tonight on the comments. I'll I'll pin it to the top of the comments tonight for you guys if you want to go check it out. Right? I'm sure you do. So breaking news: thousands of Binance users' KYC data has been hacked, and all IDs are posted in the Telegram chat group or in a Telegram Telegram group chat. At CZ Binance needs to make Binance more secure because this, along with the 7,000 BTC hack a few months back aren't making Binance look too trustworthy. You're fucking right, it ain't. This is, I am so fuming mad right now, brothers. You don't, I'm just doing, I'm trying to be happy for you guys, right? Like, <laughs> I don't want to, I'll fucking start throwing stuff around around here. Ha, just kidding, I'm not that kind of person, but look. When accessed, when I, yes, when accessed, the Find Your Binance KYC group on Telegram contains 
several images of people holding their identity cards, such as passport, voter ID, etc., and a placard saying Binance and the date the image was taken, which strangely is February 24th, 2018. And so... That's what it sounds... Okay, so let's just read on. In response... I'm just learning this fucking shit, too. In response to the latest development, <clears throat> Binance CEO Cheng Pen Xiao has issued a statement on Twitter urging users not to fall for the KYC leak FUD. It ain't no fucking FUD. There's the fucking old lady and old man right there. Okay, it ain't no fucking FUD. It's fucking real. In response... Wait, where did I go? Oh, KYC FUD. He said that they are currently looking into the matter. Don't fall into the KYC leak FUD. He, we are investigating. We'll update shortly. Okay. <laughs> so this all happened like right now, right before this show, like within the past hour. It's 4.49 a.m. right now here on the East Coast of America where I'm broadcasting from. So the Telegram, yes, from my underground lair in South Beach. <laughs> the Telegram group has already gained more than 7,300 members and counting. Many Twitter users believe that KYC details were hacked earlier and are only being posted on the Telegram group now. In a report published in January, CCN stated that a hacker going by the name Exploit Dot was selling leaked KYC data from crypto exchanges on the dark web. This included images of individuals holding up a piece of paper with the word Binance and the data and the date the image was taken. In its response to the report, Binance said at the time that it had evidence that the leaked KYC pictures were not from Binance accounts. Well, it said Binance on it. What the fuck are you talking about? Uh, he's trying to hide this. This is too bullshit right here. To elaborate, in regards to the image data we collect from our customers during the KYC process, every image, every image that the Binance system processes for KYC purposes is embedded with a hidden digital watermark. So the fuck what? What does that have to do with anything? And then they go into some other Binance hacks, okay? So and I, we don't give a fuck about all the hacks. I give a fuck about this. This fucking KYC shit looking like this. Bang! Look at it. Look at the old lady and the old man right there. Yeah. What's this guy's name? If I blew up the image, I'd have his shit. Oh, he's from Zimbabwe? Look at he has Zimbabwe ID. <laughs> Where's she from? Oh, she's from she's from England. Yep, there they go. There they go. So alright guys, so I mean, I mean, I don't know what to say. Just that's it. That's what happened right now, okay? <sighs> I am so fumed. I am so angry, man. You guys would not believe how I feel. I have it set up, man. I was going to fucking show you guys trades tonight. Right here. And I'll show you right now. We'll do it tomorrow. I'm murdering it right now. Bang. I'll even show you right here. I'm in four trades right now. Bang. Australian dollar. Bang. Took that down last night. Bang, took it down there last night. Boom, took the euro up last night. Now my euro USD trade is not working for me. <laughs> That's hidden behind my head right here. You can't see it. But uh, I got in here. It started going up and ew, we're turning backwards. So I don't think that one's going to work out. That's how it is, brothers. You win some, you lose some. Actually, talking about trading is making me happy, actually. <laughs> Maybe I should talk to you guys. All right, so here it is. What am I in? This is my trigger chart. This is my setup chart. So you see the nice trend? Bing, 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 bing. All right, and if you look at it in the hourly, when you open it up, boom, see the trend? See those three lines? That's the three SMAs, the 30, 50, and the 100. Notice how price bounces right off those SMAs? Boom, trend, or boom, short it, 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 and that's the short I took last night. Bang! I think that's behind my head, you can't see it, but I'll close it so you can see the kill that I made, well, that I'm still making. Bang! Well, how do you know that's going to happen, dog? Because the trend is your friend, bitch. Look, the trend's your friend, brother. Look at that trend I just showed you, okay? All right, we are going to talk a little bit. This is making me happier, actually. <laughs> the trend is your friend. Look how many times you traded off this trend, okay? One time, two time, three time, four time, five time, six time, and now, bang, seven times. Yeah, that's one trend. How many days was that? That's over the last two weeks. Right, this is last week. You see these two lines here, that's a week. Well, that's where the week starts. So this was last Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. I gotta say the days backward. Yeah, bang, look, look, 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 bang. The trend is your friend. That's how you make money in markets, buddy. That's real trading, trend trading. Okay, that's how we kill you guys. You guys come in doing all your little weird stuff. Yeah, we just crush you. We just crush you guys. 
Yeah, look at this trend. Bang, look, look, bang, look, look, bang. But then it went crazy. That was the Trump talk. <laughs> so it, it's a very fast market there. And so I'm in this trade here, right? I killed it last night. Australian dollar, I got in right here. Bang! Well, how did you know it's going to drop? Because that's how it works. All right, all right. I'm happier now. Yes, the fuel ends some trading. That's a good cure right there. Oh, let me show you a little something. Well, how do you know where the trends are, Shamari? Well, bang! I got this piece of software right here. It tells me. So it's hard for you to see right now because I haven't set this up properly yet on, on this trading platform yet. But these are all currency pairs right here, all of these lines. So these red dots is a downtrend. The green dots, uptrending. So you see it scans the whole market for me. Well, the majors, right? So right here, it's showing me the Canadian dollar is right now tanking against, not tanking, let's stop using those immature words. It sounded like a crypto fool. Is now going is now in a downtrend against uh, against the Japanese yen, Australian dollar down against the yen. Actually, that's what I just showed you the trade I'm in. So down, down, down. Right here, the U.S. dollar is up against the Canadian dollar. So it just shows me the trends, and so it saves me time. I don't have to go fucking through every chart looking for them. Right, this just tells you, and so that's why you probably wonder, well, how does everybody know what to trade? How did everybody know to trade Facebook today? How did everyone know to trade? Uh, Microsoft today, yeah, because we have trend scanners. The whole, all those guys, all the big boys. What do you think? Yeah, and then they unleash their traders on the market. Trending, trending markets. The trend is your friend. Did you not see how friendly that was? You just made five killer trades off of one trend. I mean, and the trend goes longer, but my, my, it's not letting me show you. See how? If I pull back longer, yeah, here it is. Bang, buy low or sorry, sell high, bang, 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 which is what I did last night, bang, sold high, baby. That's what they mean by buy low, sell high, okay, is that. When it retraces, bang, that's the high, sell. Bang, that's the high, sell. Bang, that's the high, sell. Bang, that's the high, I sold, right? Bang, that's how it is. The trend is your friend. Oh, this is making me happy. Fuck. Fuck Binance. Fuck these crypto. Fuck all this crypto shit. No, I'm just kidding, man. I got to make this money out of this. But anyways, this is making me happy, though. <laughs> Showing you. Bang! That's trending markets. The trend. Google that. The trend is your friend. Okay? And that's the truth. Like, that's how it works. Like, we have programs, software. And so you see how my charts are set up as well. I could just show you right here. You see my lines? Here's what a regular chart looks like when you get MetaTrader. Okay, I'll just open one up. Yeah, like this. That's a bunch of crazy shit right there. How are you going to trade that fuckery? Nah, dog. You got to put your own template in. So I have special custom-made templates that I put in. Let me see if I can insert one. All right, and then I'll show you what my chart looks like after I put the template in. Yeah, see how clean that motherfucker looks now? There's the trend. Bang! Look, look! Oh, it went all the way and then bang! Look, look! So that's a double tap on that one. Yeah, and you see my lines? Those are the round numbers. Those are round numbers. Only the round numbers. All those other bullshit lump numbers that you saw on that other chart? It's nonsense. Round numbers. You yeah. know. So that's how it works, guys. You know, you scan the market, find the trends, and then bang! Murder them. Bang! Murder them. <laughs> I'll show you my I'll show you the one I'm losing actually. So this one here, yeesh. So I'll show you the setup chart. The setup chart is here. So you can see it started trending in the hourly. So bang, look, look. And then bang. And so I was like, all right, let me give it one more. So I got in right here. It started. I was like, all right. And then when I woke up, it's like down here now. So yeesh. I don't think this trade's gonna work out. My stop is around down here somewhere. So I'm probably gonna get stopped out. So, but that's how it is, guys. Like, you win some, you lose some. So, I'm in four trades. One, two, three, four trades here. And three are going my way. And, you know, it looks like the Euro USD isn't going gonna, isn't gonna to pan out for me there. So that's how you do it, brother. Scan the market. Look, look. Pick some things to kill. And go kill them. Bang. Look, look. Bang. Look, look. Bang. Yes. All right. Let's get back to the crypto crap. I know. That's what you're here for. Yes. All right. Crypto crap. Oh, and especially this crap right here. This is such fugazi. Enron, look, look. All right, guys. But 
This is a show about making money. I don't like you Ripple maniacs. I'm not talking about people who have Ripple. If you have XRPs in your portfolio, yo, man, that's your choice. That's fine. I don't mind people who just have it, you know? I mean, you know, I'm not hating on people just who own Ripple. Well, I'm talking specifically about those crazy Ripple lovers. Like, you just say anything bad about Ripple online, and they're like, you motherfucker, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You don't know how many times I've heard that from Ripple lovers. And then I have to crush them. I have to crush them, right? I have to sit there, they'll be... Yeah, what about the IMF? I have to teach a motherfucker what the IMF is. These idiots don't know what the World Bank is. Yeah, you motherfucker, you don't know. We're at the World Bank. Yeah, the World Bank writes reports, makes recommendations to governments. That's it. They don't know. They don't know. They think it's some actual World Bank. <clears throat> so I have to kill these fuck sticks. So those are the kind I'm talking about. If you're someone who's just a normal person, but you're like, yeah, well, I have Ripple in my portfolio, along with blah, blah, blah. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about those Ripple crazed out Ripple maniacs, all right? Fucking riptards. Fucking ripple tards. All right? So whenever you hear me getting angry, I'm talking about those guys. If you just hold ripple, I'm not calling you an idiot or anything. I mean, you know, I'm just talking about those maniacs. All right. So, but this is a channel. We're all about onboarding, gener revenue generating. So Ripple says they have 20 XRP, 20X rapid customers as traders track rising XRP volume. That's what they say. I mean, I'm surprised no one's come out and said, well, we're proud to be with Ripple. You're saying it. You're tweeting that you have 20. 20 who? Which ones? Who? All right. Whoops. Oh, wait. Shit. My bad. Did we go? Oh, we haven't even left. Oh, sorry. My bad. Oh, it's a good thing that fucked up then. <laughs> Bang. Okay, here we are. Wait, what happened now? Oh, you motherfucker. I can't believe I just did that. I just closed my fucking browser. Shit. All right, hold on. I got to load the stories again now. Oh, this is a weird night. This is one weird night right here. This is one strange night. Tag on it. This is strange as a motherfucker. Shit. Fuck. All right, hold on. So stupid. Look, 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 look. We back. Bang, bang, bang. All right, we're back. All right, sorry about that, guys. Fuck. This is a weird night, man. Fucking shit's getting hacked. Trades are jumping off. Fuck. My fucking screen's all... Well, I'm an idiot. I obviously shut this thing down myself. Just didn't do it by itself. All right, so let's get to the story. So, Ripple Lovers, here we go. <clears throat> Ripple on boards. 20X rapid customers as traders track rising XRP volume. Look, so Ripple Senior Vice President of Product Ashish Birla says the payments 
the payment startup is focused on getting its new X-Rapid customers up and running. The customer says it's onboarding a total of 20 financial institutions. They don't mean banks. Just financial institutions is a very loose term that Ripple talks about when they talk about financial institutions. But look, that have signed up to use the cross-border payment solution, which is designed to utilize XRP to move money around the world. Payments giant and Ripple partner, MoneyGram, is the latest to implement the technology. All right, I just wanted to make one second, guys. Okay, I just wanted to make sure everyone could see everything. It's a weird night. All right, the company says, because when I was, uh, the reason I have to make sure is because when I was trying to get my trading platform to show, man, it fucked up all my other settings. Anyway, man, don't worry about that. It, it's all working out. So, blah, 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 MoneyGram is the latest implemented technology and reported it's already using that crypto-based funds transfer system in recent earnings call. So, Burla also says XRapid, but they didn't, anyway, uh, also says XRapid will one day connect to the Interledger protocol, which is designed for the payment thing. Blah, 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 that was today. Meanwhile, XRP enthusiasts <clears throat> are reading the tea leaves to try and determine where XRapid is being used. Well, I'll tell you where it's only being used. The only two places it can be used. I've told you this. Mexico and the Philippines. I know Ripple lovers are out there. I know you Ripple fans. You guys think Ripple can be used everywhere. It can't. You cannot use it from France to South Africa. You cannot use it from America to Canada. You can't use it from England to Germany. Anywhere. Only the Philippines and only Mexico. I want you to understand that, okay? This fantasy about all these banks going to transfer out, they can't, okay? I want you to, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to read it right here to you, okay? Twitter's Tenny Toshi is tracking rising, but there's a lot of good news, um, you know, for Ripple lovers. I mean, there's good news, but I just want you to get it. You're invested in something that works in only two countries. I want you to understand that. Yeah, guys, all right? Twitter's Tenetoshi is tracking rising XRP volume on the Mexico-based crypto exchange Bitso. They only have two liquidity providers. Bitso is one, and they have another one, something something .ph in the Philippines. Those are the only two liquidity providers in the world. Okay. Uh, Bitso, which is one of the four exchanges that have signed up to accept fiat. There's only two. There's not four. There's only two. That's a lie. There's only two. Um, not a lie. These are crypto sites. They're fucking stupid idiots. They don't know. All right, they make mistakes a lot. A little due diligence wouldn't hurt. Well, which is one of four exchanges that have signed up to accept fiat from crypto uh, from financial institutions and execute X rapid set transactions. Since the partnership with MoneyGram, the XRP market in Mexico, or I mean in Bitso, Mexico, has been steadily growing. This implies the increase in X rapid payment volume. It's true. Within that's it. Within uh, Mexico, you can do the whole XRP money transfer shit in Mexico. <laughs> that's it or in the philippines right but you can't send money from mexico to america or well, I've, usually people would send money from america to mexico yeah you can't do that with x rapid you can't send money anywhere with that shit except from mexico to the philippines so in its q2 report markets report ripple reported a hundred percent 170 percent rise in x rapid volume over the previous quarter yeah well having 107 percent rise isn't hard when no one was using it before Q2 saw the highest number of customer transactions on, on a Ripple net. In fact, the number of X Rapid transactions increased 170% from Q1 to Q2. And Ripple has a 30% increase in the number of live X Rapid partners in Q2. Ripple anticipates this momentum in transaction volume to continue as more partners and customers go live. So, here's Burla. This is the Ripple guy. Okay. So far, Burla says, X Rapid is up and running in two countries. That's what I want you guys to get. I've been telling you guys this from last year. Two countries. All you fucking you crazed Ripple lovers who talk shit to me. Okay? That's it. This is Burla. This is Burla. Right? So far, Burla says, okay, who the fuck is Burla? Let's go back up and look. Let's go back up and look. Ripple is senior vice president. Ripple's senior vice president of product, Ashish what? Burla, bang, look, look, bang, look, look, bang. That's from Ripple's mouth. Don't fucking get on my comments and get angry at me because I'm reading you something that the Ripple guy is telling you, okay? I've been telling you fuck sticks this for a long, long time. Two countries, okay? So far, Burla says X Rapid is up and running in two countries with more in the works. Yeah, well, they've been up and running in Mexico and the Philippines since last summer. 
They haven't onboarded anyone else. Bittrex was supposed to be their liquidity provider for America, and then Bittrex told them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> Look, guys, just telling you. Because that's the problem with XRP, right? Is if the exchanges don't want to do the thing they want, well, then they're fucked. Right? They're fucked. They depend on an exchange saying, yeah, you can use this as your liquidity provider. And that's the whole problem. A bank isn't going to trust that you and that exchange are, are going to stay partners. Or maybe the exchange shuts down. Then what? Now I have no liquidity? It's never going to work. Well, in terms of the banks. It'll work for little shit, but not banks. The whole big uh, ripple the standard and all that. You can fuck all that. So let's look at it. So far, Burla says X Rapid is up and running in two countries. A whole two with more in the works. <laughs> yeah, right. It's available today in Mexico and the Philippines. It's been available for almost a, over a year. So far, no more com countries coming online. So far, the positive responses from our customers in these two countries has been overwhelming. But we're working on the next set of destinations, which we will be announcing in hopefully short order here. Well, there you go, brothers. But, I mean, you know, <laughs> man, so spaghetti. But um, that's it. That's it. So they said they've onboarded 20 clients. Really? Why aren't you telling us their names? Right? When you onboard someone, you're proud, right? The company says, yes, we're proud to be using this. We're proud to be doing that. He just said that in a tweet. <laughs> it's probably bullshitting. But anyways, that's what he says. And this is a place about onboarding. So they said they got 20x rapid customers. And those customers are in the Mexico and the Philippines. I mean, and the reason I'm reading this story is, I know I just, you know, I'm telling you the truth. But the truth is, and here's something good for you ripple lovers, is the truth is, all right, well, you're making money in Mexico and the Philippines. It's generating revenue and money. They're generating revenue from the Philippines and Mexico. So th what I'm just saying is it's not living up to the hype. It was supposed to be some global money thing. All the banks were going to get on it and all that. Yeah, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. And, uh, you know, now the banks are just making their own stable coins and all this other stuff. So that ain't happening. Swift just came out with their new thing. The banks are already on Swift. That ain't happening. But, um, yeah, little things like that, like little remitters and and stuff it is generating revenue and that's why i read this story but i want you guys to keep it in perspective okay keep it in perspective all right but now let's let's talk about something that is making big money bang v chain yes i know i know this guy keeps reading v chain stories well v chain keeps onboarding motherfuckers what do you want me to do <laughs> what can i do about that you know it's like that ripple story i just read to you I know that's a bunch of fugazi. It's only in Mexico and the Philippines, but still got to read it to you. It's making money. Anything that makes money, we talk about that here first. First, it goes money generation. Then it goes regulation. And then we get into just other stuff sometimes. That's how this channel works. If you're generating revenue, bang, you're getting talked about on here. I don't give two fucks. Right? After that, bang, any regulation talk, then we get into that. Then, yes, then it's open for debate what we do. <laughs> All right, brothers. Well, V-Chain on board's another one. Yes, yes, indeed. What else is new, brothers? <laughs> Are you onboarding? Yes, touche. Good one, brother. Look, V-Chain moves into China's $3.9 billion wine imports industry. So they were already in the China thing. So I'm reading really to the, about the Australia thing was what happened today. Yeah, here it is. All right. Penfold. So this Penfold shit, I guess it's some super high class wine or some shit. Mike. Some super high class shit. Like you can only buy it at certain places and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like that. Like you just don't get to go to a regular old wine store and get it. So, all right, hold on. Let me get a let me get a sip. You guys read this for a second. Oh, I'm in a better mood now. Oh, I'm glad I showed you guys that trading shit, man. Fuck, it cheered me up to see my to see my money being made. Made me happy. <laughs> yes, yes, slaughter. I'm slaughtering nicely. Look. But how do you know? And I know because the trend is my friend. It tells me. <laughs> it tells me. Look. Oh, you see how happy I am now? I love you guys. We're going to get rich. Look, if you want to know how to trend trade, go to Learn Forks Live, buy that course. I mean, it's for Forex, but once you learn how to trend trade, you can trade any market. All markets trend trade, right? If you want to be an options trader, go for it. You can trade, trade in options, right? Trend trading 
and level two trading. Those are the two ways that the professionals trade. All this other crazy talk, that's all bullshit. That's all a bunch of fugazi. I know, yeah, you, it's hard to believe, right? It is though, it's all fugazi, guys. V-Chain moves in China, sweep on that middle line. Let's go. So, Penfolds. <clears throat> One of Australia's most, or oh, oldest, and most iconic wineries is now the first of its kind on V-Chain's wine traceability platform. No, it isn't. V-Chain has that other Italian company already. Whatever. See these websites? Fuck, they, they don't do due diligence, man. Like, they don't fucking do their homework. Or, yeah, this is so pathetic. Anyways, though, let's, let's just be happy that our V-Chain holdings are... Yeah, it's going to make us rich. Look, is now the first of its kind on VeChain's wine traceability platform. It is not, but look, launched last year in collaboration with DIG Shanghai. Wego, oh fuck! <laughs> I should have Wego Kiao, Wego Kiao Direct Imported Goods Company Limited, a major importer in China. The platform is designed to stem the flow of counterfeit goods, authenticating the origin, the origin of each bottle. Each bottle. Yes. Local reports show that counterfeit, counterfeit penfolds accounted for over 1 million in sales in 2017 in Shanghai. Oh, Shanghai is just one city. And over 2.8 million in fake bottles in Shenzhou. Oh, fuck. VeChain's platform tracks the entire life cycle of the wine. From wineries, from wineries to distributors by using blockchain encrypted NFC tags. That will allow Penfold's customers to discover detailed information about their purchases. According to the announcement, Penfold's BIN 407 bottles are now available at three locations. Like, that's how exclusive this shit is. Like, you got to go to the location to get it. Like, you know, you just don't go to a regular old wine store to get this stuff. Are now available in three locations. Tagged and powered by VeChain Thor. Oh, VeChain, v VeChain empowered wine. Remember <laughs> the empowered beef? The blockchain-empowered beef. All right, which connects blockchain technology with real-world infrastructure, such as IoT. So if you want to go get some of this pen folds, if you can afford it, you can go get it at Wang Shao Shao Tao International Exhibition and Trading Center. You can go get it at DIG Flagship Store. And you can get it at Senlan Shangdu Store. Yeah, see what you get your wine, baby. And here's the pen fold. And that's the V-Chain. This is that the tag? Yeah, that's a V. This is what their tag looks like. Remember we watched that one guy? So we watched the other guy that one time do it on a barcode, right? It was a VeChain barcode thing. And remember all the data it gave him? I don't remember. What did he? Oh, it was a bottle of wine too, right? Remember? Fucking guy was scrolling. Like they gave you in-depth shit about your in-depth information about your product. Like it is no joke. So that's it. That's the NFC tag right there. Bang. You guess you scan it or do well, obviously some kind. So DIG points to a 10% increase in sales after platform integration as an indication of how VeChain's solution instills a greater sense of trust for customers. Exactly. Exactly. That's it. You want pen folds for real? Well, now you're going to know if it's real or not. That's one thing. These guys, they might, be able to, they might be able to put fake wine in a fake bottle and put a label on it. Yeah, well, you can't fake a VeChain fucking NFC tag, son. You can't do that. Right? You can't do it. That's really, you know... Yeah, man, you can't. So you're really going to know. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> Ten years from now, I won't be surprised if if you get a, if you go to the store and it doesn't have some sort of V-chain tag or some tag. I hope it's V-chain. <laughs> but some type or, or some sort of QR thing to show you about your stuff. You're going to be like, yo, that's some Fugazi shit right there. Right? You go to the store, grab yourself a steak. Right? It doesn't have a tag. You're going to be like, fuck that. I don't know. Probably selling me dog meat. <laughs> if I can't scan it and see that it's from a good farm and all that, fuck all that. I bet you in 10 years that's how shit's going to be. All right? I'm telling you. All right? <laughs> fucking selling me some fucking horse meat. Calling it. I told you about that here. <clears throat> there was a big scandal here in Miami about five years ago. Yeah, these motherfuckers were selling horse meat for beef. And then the, I don't know, someone said something like ratted them out to the health department and sent a sample into the health department. The health department was like, what the fuck? Yeah, they got, and they were in all these stores around here in Miami. Yeah, it was some fucked up shit. <laughs> That's why I just go to good places to buy my. <laughs> so by reading the NFC chip, customers can access the relevant wine bottles immutable. 
product information stored on the blockchain, including provenance information verified by independent auditors, auditors such as DNVGL, the big boy. Doesn't get bigger than that. With the VeChain Thor blockchain technology and the WPT platform, penfolds and similar wineries can now make it less likely for their products to be counterfeited while allowing consumers to form a more in-depth insight into the product, enhancing their confidence and trust. True. Remember? It told you all about the wine, the guy. The guy was going, going. He was scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Like, they get into it. <laughs> I was like, damn, dog. I ain't sure I want to read all that. <clears throat> as long as if, but you know, for me, I wouldn't give a fuck. I wouldn't want to read all of it. But as long as I, as long as I can scan it and something pops up, I'd be like, okay, it's authentic. Good enough, good enough. You know what I mean? Fuck reading all this shit. All right, it's, this is beef. Good, good enough. That's good enough. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about the farm and all that. I mean, I mean, if you care though, it's all right there. Uh, uh, remember, we saw the Walmart China thing, right? The QR codes on that. All right. So look, guys, a research report published by Research and Markets on Wine Imports in China from 2019 to 2023 shows that China's current market value for imported wine stood at roughly $3.9 billion, oh my gosh, in 2018, up 6.5% for 2017. Well, I mean, they have 1.7, or sorry, 1. something billion people, of course, it's gonna be a lot. So the Chinese wine market is expected to become the world's second largest by 2023, with a market value of roughly 23 billion, according to analysis. All right, but look, look, that's great. Look, but this is great for V-Chain. Look, look, another onboarding, look, look. Some fancy wine, look at how fancy pants that is. It's fancy pants. Look, look how exclusive. You can only get it from three spots. I mean, that's how that's how deep that shit is. You know what I mean? That's that kind of shit. Yeah, you can only get that shit from three spots. I didn't know Australia rolled like that with wine. Shit. Never heard about that shit. You always hear about Italian wine, right? European wines. Yeah. Never heard about fucking Australian wine. Look, but it's badass. So look, brothers, V-Chain. Look, look, bang. Look, look, bang. Look, look, bang. All right, let's get to the next story. Boom. Yes, brothers, yes, I am cheering up. I am cheering up. In fact, let me just take a peek at my trades again. <laughs> yes. Let me look at my money one second. Yes. Nice. All right, brothers. Let's get back to this, though. <laughs> yes, take a peek. So, all right, what are we doing here? Oh, the China thing. Yeah, so... So, China's softening stance on Bitcoin and crypto, says Circle CEO. Mm. Well, so let's read on. I agree with some things he says, some things I don't. Because he gets into some market stuff and it's a bunch of crypto propaganda bullshit. <laughs> but I'm going to read it to you anyway. Well, and explain why I disagree. I'm not just going to read it and let you read here bullshit. I'm going to explain why I disagree. Holy. What a night. All right, brothers, let's go. So, in a new interview on CNBC, Jeremy Allaire, co-founder and CEO of Circle. Oh, so this was the guy, Jeremy Allaire, this was the guy who testified in, in Congress the other day at the crypto thing. Yeah, yeah, him and then the two ladies. This was the guy. He was he's part of the blockchain, um, a blockchain um, lobbying group here in America. So here in America, how it works is, well, I mean, we're not going to get into all the lobbying, but how it works is industries pay these lobbyists to go basically beg politicians to do what you want, right? So, <laughs> so he's the head, not the head, I don't know if he's the head, but he's a member, or, C, or Circle is a member of this lobbying group. Um, all right, so that's how... That's just how shit works here in America. So, but he, what I wanted to just tell you is he's the guy who represented the blockchain group in front of Congress the other day, in front of the Senate. That's what I wanted to say. All right. So, so, I mean, he's got status. You know what I mean? The, the blockchain people chose him to be the representative. So, you know, you know, take it for what it's worth. All right. So in a, in a new interview on CNBC, Jeremy Allaire, co-founder and CEO of Circle, tells host Andrew Ross Sorkin and Sorkin. Why developments in China indicate that the country's hardline anti-crypto stance is softening. So, and he's kind of repeating what I've told you, but, you know, whatever. I'd like you to hear it from some CEO fancy pants, right? 
I know you trust it more. I mean, you see I'm a killer, but, you know. Hook! I know. You want to hear from some sea ho? <laughs> well, I'm going to give it to you. Look! So, we've been seeing, from my vantage point, uh, a softening in the Chinese stance towards crypto. Recently, a major Chinese court defended that Bitcoin is, in fact, legal property. We read about that last night. Uh, yeah, it's legal property in, kind of so, uh, in China. So, like they said, you can own it. Yeah, you can't spend it and shit, though. Right? Um, but you can own it. Who cares? Store value, motherfucker. That's what it's going to be anyway. Um, we've seen one of the very largest commercial banks, Bank of China, start to do proactive information marketing <laughs> about the benefits of Bitcoin, the risks of Bitcoin, but more broadly, its role in the world. And remember we read, I showed you that story about the state-owned bank, the state-owned bank, that's the infographic he's talking about. That infographic, I showed you the infographic, that's what he's talking about. So the Chinese government banned initial coin offerings and most forms of Bitcoin trading in 2017. It has also discouraged Bitcoin mining by driving many mining operations out of business. However, a June report from Xinhua News Agency, China's state-run press agency, I cannot emphasize this enough. Whenever we read Chinese stories, whenever you see the words state-run, state-run, in other words, this is the official Chinese government talking. Hey, you guys know about China, right? It's a one-party system. I, mean, I don't know how much you guys know about politics, but... It's a one-party system. The Chinese, the Communist Party of China runs that shit. If they don't want you to see something, you don't see it. Right? You've heard about the Great Firewall of China? Yeah, if they don't want certain internet stuff getting in, they don't let it. So everything that the Chinese get exposed to is state-sanctioned, basically, okay? So I want you to understand that. Look, look, brothers. China's state-run press agency stated that Bitcoin displays the attributes of a safe haven asset. What did I tell you, fucksticks? Store value. Store value. Even China says it. They're like, look, look. <clears throat> Signifying a potential change in the government's outlook. Yes. Xinhua news agency said that. Let's see if we can even call this up. I wonder if we can look at this. Oh, it is taking us to it. Oh, and I can't read Chinese. Oh, translate. Hold on. Let's check it out. So we'll do a translate. Let's see what happens. Bing. Oh, look at this. So here we are, guys. <laughs> yes. I know. I wanted to do that translate thing before, but it didn't work last time when I was showing you the infographic. Look, so here it is. This is the Chinese. This is China's Xinhua news thing right here. All right. Let's see what they say. You want to read it? Well, I'm going to read it to you. I guess I can't get an answer from you over there. Look, financial op observation. Bitcoin continues to skyrocket and speculate speculative risk rises. Oh, well, it is risky. So they're not bullshitting their people. That's one thing. <laughs> let's just take a quick peek. Let's just see what, let's just. So they're just talking about the prices. So they keep talking about the price, price, price. I kind of want to look and just see what they say. Like in terms of, they're just telling them the price, but I want to see if they say something like if it's good or bad or what, like kind of thing. Um. The latest issue of the Futures Position Report released in this Okay, so they start talking about... All right, so Bitcoin's recent price surge has attracted a lot of speculative funds to enter the market. The latest issue of the Futures Positions Report released by the U.S. Commodity, uh, you know, the CFTC, shows that as of the 18th, the non-commercial positions in the Bitcoin futures traded in the Chicago, the CME, uh, the non-commercial position aimed at obtaining speculative products Oh, I haven't even taught you guys about cot charts yet, have I? No, I'll show you guys that. I haven't even shown you. Fuck. Um, have increased significantly. We don't need to know that yet. That's why I haven't said anything. And trade trading. So they're reporting on what's happening here in America. Blah, blah, blah. So they're talking more about the price. They just keep talking about the price. I want to kind of hear if the government says something here. This is the government's shit. Okay, this is the government talking. The Chinese Communist Party, right here. This is their official shit. They just keep talking about the price. I think they're just trying to educate their people then. All right, now they're talking about hacking. Oops, shit. Now they're talking about, where were we? Hacking and security breaches. Wait, where were we? Where the fuck was that? 
Yeah, here we go. Talking about a little hacking, security breaches, market fraud. So they're not saying it's bad or good. They're just sort of educating. With the recent announcement of Facebook, so they're talking about Facebook, talking about what the Federal Reserve says. Our guys at American Federal Reserve. All right, so they're not saying, all right, all right. I just wanted to see, like, if they actually said, now go buy some <laughs> or don't buy it. You know what I mean? All right, anyways, though. So look, however, all right, let's get back to the regular. That was interesting. Nice. See, that's how you got to look around, brothers. Look around, brothers. Dig, brothers. Dig for the news. That's how you get good trading opportunities. Now, so, however, a June report from Xinhua News Agency, China's state-run press agency, stated that Bitcoin displays the attribute of a safe haven asset signifying a potential change in the government's outlook. So let's remind ourselves what we're doing here. Remember, we're going to talk, this story is about China's softening stance on Bitcoin. Because we went to that other story, so I just wanted to remind you what we're looking at here. <laughs> Sometimes I trail off and I forget what I'm reading. All right. Uh, where were we? Likewise, the Bank of China, that was the one that I read you the other day, state-owned Bank of China, issued an extensive infographic, and we looked at it. Where was it, though? Let's do this again now. Oh, shit. All right, fuck off. I thought it was going to give us the infographic. It's just giving us. All right, forget that. I wanted to show you because now I have that the translate thing going. I wanted to see what it translated into. All right, well. So last month, touting the benefits of Bitcoin as a new asset with limited supply. Exactly. Limited supply. Scarcity. Oh, it's truly scarce. It's not like gold. You keep saying gold is scarce. But for thousands of years, you keep digging this shit out the ground. You keep telling us diamonds are scarce and that's why they're so expensive. Yeah, but you keep finding more. How scarce is it? You don't know how scarce it is because you don't know how many there really are, is there? There could be a whole mountain of just diamonds somewhere you haven't discovered yet. <laughs> of course not, but whatever. I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am right. I don't know. Look, brothers, just being silly. Oh, yes, the fuel is making me happy. Yes, yeah, making me forget all about Binance. Look. Oh, when you hear good China stuff, bang, look, look, bang, look, look. Yes. All right, guys. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. All right, guys. What are we talking about here, brothers? Oh, yes. Likewise, the Bank of, Inf of China issued an extensive infographic last month touting the benefits of Bitcoin as a new asset with limited supply. Limited. There ain't going to be no more. Hey, you can't pull any more of that shit out the ground, son. Once it's done, it's done. Yes. Scarcity makes it truly valuable. You only you know exactly how many there are. That's why I'm telling you, 200 grand on a Bitcoin, brothers. That's where I think it's gonna go. I know. I hear the million dollar stuff. I that's a little crazy. I think <laughs> I could be wrong. I mean, I don't know. To me, 200 grand though sounds reasonable. At 330 thousand a piece, that gives it the um, market cap of gold. I can't remember how many trillions gold is. The market cap of gold is, but. Um, $330,000 is, would make, if, if Bitcoin goes to $330,000, that'll give it the same market cap as gold. Just so you know. All right. So, um, the marketing material also outlines <clears throat> for beginners, how the payment network operates and how, and who powers it. They were teaching their people. They're teaching their people. Told you. Look, it might be all banned now, but they're rolling it out slow. I told you they're rolling it out slow. You don't come out with a fucking... 37 of your favorite cryptos and telling people every month for nothing or to tease them. Hey, guys, these are great cryptos. Oh, but you can't buy it. Come on, dude. They're going to unleash. They're going to unleash. Aller notes that there is significant Chinese participation in the Bitcoin market through offshore platforms in jurisdictions such as Singapore. And he, and he describes a macro correlation between recent U.S.-China economic tensions and the increasing price of Bitcoin. That's bullshit. And this is the part I don't agree with. But, fuck. I think the broader theme of Bitcoin specifically, crypto more broadly, participating in these global macro forces is becoming more and more clear. I don't think so. Rising nationalism, rising amounts of currency conflict, trade wars. These are all supportive of a non-sovereign, highly secure digital store value. And that's very clearly been the fundamental thesis for Bitcoin as it continues to play out. And that's complete bullshit. When you want to fucking, when big boys want to save their money, it's all about flight to safety, baby. Flight to safety. U.S. bonds, Swiss bonds, Japanese bonds. So that's a bunch of bullshit he's talking about. I mean, he's just a, yeah, he's not a, he's not a market player. However, in a series of tweets, Primitive Capital founding partner, W. Wan debunks the narrative. Oh, 
Okay, we got a debunkage. Chinese buying up Bitcoin is a very dubious narrative, in my opinion. One, Bitcoin is trading at a negative premium in Chinese-centric exchanges like Huobi and OKX. Two, Renminbi. So the real, the, they, people in the news always call Chinese money the Yuan. The real name of the Chinese money is called the Renminbi. Okay, so that's what this is, RMB, Renminbi. That's the real name of their money. I don't know why people, these news channels say Yuan all the time, but their money is actually called the Renminbi. All right. So Renminbi dominated OTC price is now at a 1% premium within its normal range since the bull. I personally think the overall global financial uncertainty does help push up the market, but capital might come from the non-Chinese sides more than the Chinese side. Gold, on the other hand, saw a real spike in volume and prices from the, the Chinese uh, denominated trading pairs. See, the CNY, that's how it is. So RMB, Renminbi, that's really the name of their money. But CNY is the Chinese Yuan. It's weird. I don't know why they do that. <laughs> their real money is called the Renminbi, though. Uh, if they really want to hedge global financial uncertainty, especially local currency devaluation, Tether is the go-to place. Exactly. Yeah, I know all these motherfuckers out here. They're like, yeah, yeah, Bitcoin is a hedge against this. Bitcoin is not a hedge against fuck all, fucker. <laughs> Bitcoin is not a hedge against anything. Look at the prices that we just saw. Hold on, look at this. You call this a hedge? Hold on, you know, let me laugh at you guys. <laughs> or not you guys. I mean, you guys are my boys. I don't laugh at my boys. Ugh, not my killer bees. But look, look, let me just show you something. You call this a hedge? Watch this. Hold on, what was the price of Bitcoin last night? Yeah, Bitcoin, so Bitcoin was at 12,171 last night. It's at 11,572 tonight when we did the thing. Yeah, you call that a hedge? The fucking shit just went down 600 bucks <laughs> in a day. One day. <laughs> That's no hedge, motherfucker. That's insanity. Why would I do that? Oh, brothers. Luck, luck. So, anyways, whatever, man. Uh, but don't worry, it's going to make us money, so that's why I buy it. Yeah, it's going to be 200 grand one day. But all this shit about it being a hedge and eh, it's better than your real money, it's garbage. Yeah, Bitcoin went down 90% last year. If you had taken, if last year you had taken all your money and put it in Bitcoin as an American, yeah, you're fucked up, homeboy. Your shit's fucked up. Well, last year it got fucked up. If you hodled, if you held it all the time, now you're it's coming back, but yeesh. So if they really want to hedge global financial uncertainty, oh, and that's what I was saying, because he says Tether is the go-to place. Exactly. That's true. If you're fucking, like, if I was a Venezuelan, I would never put my money in Bitcoin. Are you crazy? But, or anyone with, like, uh, market turmoil, you know, the uh, what Iran is getting sanctioned now, and uh, who else is out here getting all fucked up? Anyways, there's a bunch of countries that are fucked up. And I, I'd put it in Tether. Yeah, because it, it's stable. That's a stable coin. It's stable, right? So while my, my, while my you know, if I was in uh, Venezuela, yeah, while my fiat is tanking, all right, fine, my tether is nice, stable. Whereas if you had bought Bitcoin last year with your Venezuelan money, yeah, well, Bitcoin crashed 90%. You got crushed both sides from your fiat and your Bitcoin, right? You see? So I agree with this guy in this sense. If they really want to hedge global financial uncertainty, especially local currency devaluation, tether is the go-to place. I agree with him. Instead of Bitcoin, sorry to let you guys down, he said. <laughs> it's true. I mean, just do the look. I mean, it's obvious. Tether's tethered. A dollar. It's always going to be that. Bitcoin is more a long-term hedge <clears throat> by some high net worth people or just smart people like me. Yeah, just hold all that shit. It's a long-term play. I had 200 grand about five years, buddy. I'm holding that thing like a motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, blah, blah. However, Tether is now at, at negative premium too. But, but we... Oh wait, hold on, let me get a sip. Hmm. Oh man, showing you guys my trades, man, made me so happy actually. Fuck. I was so angry. But we anyway want a sound narrative to moon Bitcoin. Hmm. Oh, that's right. But we anyway want to sound with it, so let it be. I totally buy into this. So what he says is, I like Bitcoin, and that's the truth. Don't worry about it. Your Bitcoin's going to be great. 
And exactly, that's, I mean, he's just saying the same things I was telling you, right? Chinese state-owned bank came out with the infographic. China's state-owned bank, here it is. Here's the Xinhua newspaper right here. Oh, let me teach you guys a little something. Look, whenever you see an X at the beginning of a word in Chinese, let me show you guys. Right? Oh, come on, what the fuck? Okay, you see an X, right? Yeah, it's pronounced sh. So the the president of China, his name is Xi Jinping, right? Xin. So this is Xinhua, right? Xin. That's how you pronounce an X. I know the Chinese; they always put the X's at the front. When I was a kid, I used to be like, "How do you pronounce that?" Ticking, right? And then someone told me, "Nah, man, it's pronounced sh." I was like, "Ah, oh, okay." So Xinhua. Yes. All right. Just a little look, brothers. You're here to learn. Yeah, you learn everything around these parts. <laughs> little trading. Little Chinese pronunciation. Look, look. Yes, that's why it's the greatest show on earth. The greatest in the multiverse, fuckstick. Can't help it. Look. So that's great, China. I, we talked about it. And so I just wanted to confirm it. What let you hear from a CEO's mouth. Telling you exactly what I've already been telling you. But look. Uh, so, all right, guys. Let's get to our stuff. Let's get to our shout outs. Bang. China's on the way, brothers. Bang. Our money's on the way, brothers. Look, look. Bang. Yes. What do we got? So I've been, brother, Binium. Look, look, Binium. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Look. What's he talking about? Oh, man, I am in a real good mood. Yes, I am about to slaughter these sons of bitches tonight. Rip their heart out. And eat it while it beats and he's looking at my eyes. Wow. Yes, and fling him to the side. <laughs> yes. Look, brothers. So, okay, hold on. Let's get back to our crypto. Fuck, I'm ready to rock these motherfuckers tonight. The Seoul Metropolitan Government will give citizens cryptocurrency to be used with its new blockchain-based service this November. What? Hold on. Let me read that slowly. That freaked me out. The government, the Seoul Metropolitan Government, will give citizens cryptocurrency to be used with its new blockchain-based services this November. What? Oh, we're probably going to have to talk about this tomorrow, brothers. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Holy. The government's doing it? They, hold on. We'll give their citizens. They're giving the citizens. Hold on. We'll see. It's just, oh, and look at who it is. Look, look. I'm bleeding. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm going to do to these fuck sticks. That's what I'm going to do to these guys tonight. I'm going to give them a little bit of, I'm bleeding. <laughs> yes. I'm bleeding. Michelle. Look, look, Michelle, my son, my precious jewel, the fruit of my womb. <laughs> I love that one. The fruit of my womb, my son, what are you doing downstairs still? Mama, leave me. The markets. They are moving. The V chain is onboarded more. I must buy more, mama. China is coming, mama. The stance is loose, mama. Ripple has just added 20 more people to the X Rapid, mama. I'm investing in the cryptocurrency. Now leave me, woman. <laughs> I'm bleeding. Yes. Oh, I'm going to give those boys some. Bang! Look, look! Bang! Oh, I'm going to give him some of this right here tonight. You saw it, brothers. I'm going to give him a little bit of Van Breeden. Yes! Love you, brother. See you, brother. Thank God you're here. Look. One day I'm going to meet your mother. And I swear I'm going to kiss her. Mwah! Right on the lips. Mama, I love you. Mwah! <laughs> Van Breeden. Yes! <laughs> All right. Oh, I am fucking in a good mood now. Oh, I am going to slaughter these guys today. Slaughter them. Did you see my trend scans? No, oh, look, we got new trends that popped up today. I haven't even dug in to fuck with these guys yet. I got so fucked up with the Binance thing. I came to do this real quick because I was already in trades and I was like, all right. Yeah, let me just do the show and then I'll go looking around for new trades. And then this fuck stick Binance thing and I got pissed. Look, I'm happy now. Oh, you motherfuckers. I'm going to take my anger out on those sons of bitches though. Look, look. Yes. I'm going to joyfully slaughter them. All right, brothers, let's move on. Bang. BDM, what do you got? Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I need to get a sip for this one. 
So I'll tell you what this, take a look at this. So what this is, is these are Bitcoin longs that got liquidated today. Bang, 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 bang. bang. Oh, these guys got slaughtered. They got slaughtered. And that's what I told him. That's what Biniam and, uh, that's what Michelle Van Brieden and uh, Biniam are talking about here. Because I answered this tweet. I said, fuck, those boys got slaughtered. Look at the slaughter. These guys are idiots. They're putting their stops too close. They're putting their stops too close. These guys are dumb. Like, look, man, when you're trading Bitcoin, you better have like a thousand dollar stop. Sorry. So if you get in at 10 grand, hey, your stop better be at something like nine, four, buddy. <laughs> Eight, nine, even better. These fucking morons don't know what they're doing. Oh, and I bet they had their leverage turned up. That's why they got stopped out. These guys don't get it. Get into the futures. Turn that leverage off. All right. And wait. You got to wait. It's, that's why they're called futures contracts, motherfucker. You're not supposed to get in and out of them every day. Yeah, it's for the future. <laughs> Idiot. You know, you hodl it. Oh, these guys got slaughtered. Slaughtered. Hold on. We got a message here. Let's see who's messaging. Let's see what the boys are talking about. Oh, <laughs> because of the... Because of the Binance, the hack. Shame, shame, shame. Okay, whatever. All right, let's get back to this. Yeah, these boys got, where were we? Binium, holy, look at this carnage. <laughs> look at that carnage. Look, man, look, guys, if you're going to get into the futures, turn the fucking leverage off. Okay, you don't want leverage on yet when you've got this product that is just ranging between 10,000 and 14,000 and, well, 9,5 and... 14 up and down up and down turn that leverage off so you just suffer the losses on a dollar basis not on a leveraged dollar basis another leverage adds to the pain yeah that's why these guys got stopped out i bet most of these guys if they had their leverage turned off they wouldn't be stopped out right now but they're so greedy they don't understand the power of leverage the power of it like they don't get it you know they just keep thinking I know, I know, I've seen them. I've seen new new guys come in. It happens in the Forex market too. Like, right, everyone's happy about leverage. Yeah, you got to know how to use it, motherfucker. It's a deadly weapon. I mean, it works for you. That's what makes us our money, right? The only reason I make money off of my trades is because I have 51 leverage. Yeah, but it crushes you when you get crushed. Right, like the one trade I showed you. Yeah, I'm about to get stopped out probably. Well, we'll see. It looks like it, I think. <laughs> Doesn't look too promising. And, you know, but the other ones, you saw that? Bang, look, look, bang, look, look, bang. The other three that I'm killing, yeah, that's all leveraged money, right? And you just got to, you have to be smart, motherfucker. So these guys got slaughtered. So I just wanted to show you that. That's what a slaughtering looks like. <laughs> oh, man, that's ugly. Look, look. All right, let's move on. Bang, son of a bitch. Look, look. Oh, you see how he ran? Look, look, bang. Look, look, bang. Look, look, bang. And just for running, Bang, another one. Airdrop, I love you, brother. Bang, yes. <laughs> he's a real trader. He's the guy that did this. That's Airdropper. Airdropper, he's a killer. He's a real, he's a stock trader. Like, he, people give him money to trade for him, to trade for them. Like, he's a real player, too. He's like me. Like, he's a killer. And uh, so, and here's what a killer says. What, what was the first thing? Fucking, fucking wrong. Ca Ooh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Fucking. Uh, Justin, Justin showed us the, uh, the, the KYC thing got hacked. Yeah. What's the first thing Ronquez said? Yeah. This is what a killer thinks. Just like me. My instinct says short B and B. <laughs> exactly. As a trader, that's how our lives are. When I read the news, I always just think of what is that doing to the market? Anything. A war breaks out. What's that going to do to the market? You know, anything, anything. What's that going to do to the market? And that's what Ronk is. That's why I love this guy, man. He's a killer. He's a stock killer waiting for the paint to dry. <laughs> he hates when I say that. So now he, he says bullshit to me. He's like, yeah, I'm waiting for the paint to dry. But the picture is a Mona Lisa. Yes, Ron is, you motherfucker. <laughs> and it probably is. You're making money. It is a Mona Lisa. It is indeed. But it still takes long to dry. Use a little spray paint. Dry faster. Forex. <laughs> All right, brother. Love you, brother. Bang. Pop it. What are you talking about? Bang. Spy lady, Brency, bang. What else we got? What are we dealing with? What are we working with? Oh, what is Binium talking about again? All right, Binium says, 
Did you know? Well, he didn't say it. This chick saying it. Oh, this is RSX. Oh, so this was the remember RSX, right? That was last week, right? It was supposed to come out with their futures contract, and then it was like the CFTC was like, "Nah, dog, you're not allowed to do that yet." <laughs> Fuck. That that was a that pissed me off too. That didn't really piss me off. They're gonna get it eventually, but annoying. So, did you know we recently secured a DCO license to offer and clear physically delivered Bitcoin futures? Read about the role of a clearinghouse and how Aerosex will protect investors in the digital markets. All right. And I guess this is the Aerosex lady right here. Probably some CEO or see something O and blah, blah, blah. All right. Good for her. Look, look, Kong. Look, look. Bye. See you, brother. Love your brother. Bye. What else we got? Freeman. See you, brother. Bye. We got new person. We got dank banker. Oh, shit. This is a weed smoking motherfucker right here. All right. Yes, indeed. What are you talking about? 420 crypto and RPG gaming. All right. All right, brother. Old school. All right, danker. Bang, buddy. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family, brother. Look, look. Lighthouse One. Who you do? Who are you talking about, brother? Lighthouse One is a marketplace exchange for opportunity zone investments into real estate and businesses. Uh, uh, real estate investor. Yes. When you get this money, brothers, you might want to think of getting some. Yes. Look, look. Not telling you what to do with your money. It's my opinion. Look, look. Bang, Lighthouse One. See you, brother. Bang. Yes. Oh, and then our favorite. Look, look. What we just read about China. Look, look. China. Look, look. Boom! When they bring on their whales, it's going to be a big old boom. Don't worry about it because they're softening and it's going to be a boom. And your portfolio is going to be all fat. It's going to be all juicy with some V-chain and stuff. And it's going to go boom. Ha <laughs> ha, brothers. Lag, lag, lag. That's how it's going down, brothers. That's how going to go down, brothers. All right, a couple more and let's get out of here. DP and MZ, brother. Bang! Did I already give her one? Bang! Yes, who's this guy? Historia Films. What are you talking about? What's this guy talking about right around these parts? Look, look. Mississippi-based production company. Making quality, relevant, entertaining films in MS. Filming on The Historian to begin in May 2013 in Hattiesburg. All right, brother. Great. Bang. Look, see you. All right. Welcome to the party, buddy. All right, brother. So let us. All right. A couple more. One more. Fuck it. Let's go. Robert. Bang. See you, brother. Oh, and there's Dino. Dino, see you, brother. Bang. That's that's Ronquez's friend. <laughs> I told Dino when I met him. I told I told him to call Ronquez. I said, "Yeah, say Ronquez, son of a bitch, <laughs> got you long range, motherfucker." Bye. <laughs> yes, I love Ronquez. He's a funny guy. Crypto arbitrage trading. Oh wait, what? Oh, this is real right here. Hold on. Crypto arbitrage trading signals. Oh, so I taught you about what arbitrage is, right? You buy something cheap over here and you sell it more expensive over there. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get into some arbitrage, oh, what's this guy talking about? Crypto arbitrage trading signals, service for earning Bitcoin cryptocurrency income from 10% per day using our arbitragepro.org telegram arbitrage pro. Check that out. Check that out. That might be interesting. Oh, arbitrage guy. Yeah, fuck, man. This is the best thing to arbitrage in the world, this crypto stuff. The prices are so different everywhere. Fucking like $300 more in South Korea than it is here. Shit, that's arbitrage like a motherfucker, dog. So look, arbitrage guys. Thanks, trading signals. Bang. Good job. Good work. Yes. All right, let's get you back to wives and lives. Look, look. Bang. So look, it was an interesting evening. Fucking Binance did that shit. <laughs> well, they didn't do it. They got done too. That's a bitch. That pissed me off, but I'm happy now. So fuck it. I don't give a fuck. Plus, anyways, man, all right, you want my ID. What are you going to do with it, fuckstick? What are you going to do with it? Like, what are you going to do? Open an account? What can you do, actually? Right? Because you said, like, you just send your, you know, you don't know my social security number. You don't know anything. So you can't fuck with my real banks or anything. So all you can do with that shit is what like what uh, nothing really i don't know so now that i'm thinking about it now that i'm happy and i'm <laughs> i'm in a straight mind now that i'm thinking about it i don't really think that's really a, such a big deal really is it what are you gonna do with my driver's license nothing fuck stick so all right so let's get to the stories we talked about ripple onboards 20x rapid customers so 
Like I said, it only happens in Mexico and, and Philippines. Keep telling you guys, Ripple lovers, you guys think this is some big worldwide shit. It ain't. It's a two-country little shithole. But 20 onboards is still money. I mean, you're going to make money from the Philippines. You're going to make money from Mexico. So that's revenue generating. And around here, look, we talk about revenue generation. Maybe it's not what we want, but it's generating revenue, so it's something. And so that's why we talk about that. Bang! B-Chain, look, look. Look, look, with their fancy pants wine stuff. <laughs> the Australian wine place. Yeah, well, that's so exclusive. You got to go to those particular spots to get it. Right? There was only three stores in China that sold it. Well, the particular bottle that they have their thing on. Because they're not... V-Chain... I, I forgot to say this. So they're using it on this one wine that they have. Like this super expensive wine that they have. But it's not... They're not using V-Chain on all their wines. Probably yet. But I mean, I'm sure they probably will. But... So it's actually just on this super fancy wine. That one we read, um, I don't remember what the name of it was. It was called Lot 40 or something like that. So that's what they started using it on. So, but another onboarding. Yeah, you know how V-Chain does it, brothers. You know, they just don't stop. They just don't stop. You know, they just keep onboarding and onboarding. So, look, look. What should I buy? What should I invest in, Shamari? Well, stuff that's onboarding stuff. Well, who's onboarding? Well, V-Chain. <laughs> Yes. Walmart, look. That's all you got to say right there, brothers. So look. And then China step. Let me get a sip. Actually, we're about to finish this thing. Ah, fuck it. One more before we get to our last story. China stance on crypto. Yeah, yes. Bye. Oh, I'm about to get you, motherfucker. Look. Here I come. How do you know, Shamari? Because <laughs> the trend is my friend. It tells me. <laughs> Look, China stands on crypto. I can't wait to deal with these fuck sticks right now. I'm going to start fucking with them while I'm uploading this even. China stands on crypto. So like I told you, man, don't let all that bullshit. Oh, China bans this, China bans that fool you. We read about it last night. Right? These Chinese guys are still doing shit. They're still doing peer to peer. They're still doing, uh, what's the other thing? OTC. And they're getting so hardcore, they're buying other people's IDs. That's probably where this motherfucker sold our Binance shit. Some Chinese folk. <laughs> so they could get their KYC thing and do their some trading. There's probably a Chinese guy right now with my face on an account under Shamari Clark. <laughs> Look, brother, if it goes to make you money, go for it. As long as it doesn't fuck with my money, you can use my ID all you want, buddy. I don't give a fuck. Have at it. Make that bread, brother. <laughs> Do what you got to do. So, but that's how the people were doing it. But like we said, look, China is not banning fuck all. They are rolling this motherfucker out nice and slow. And they are educating their people about it first. Right? That's what they're doing. They're educating them. Uh, State-owned bank gave that infographic. I just showed you Xinhua. Uh, well, reported on it. I mean, that's more of the price stuff, but. You know, it's becoming official. I mean, you don't tell your citizens that for nothing, right? Why are you telling them all about the price and everything, right? If you're not going to let them have it. And so, man, China's on the way. Bang, big money. Bang, big money. Bang, big money. Nope, brothers. So let's shill it and kill it. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. Bang. Look, look, subscribe below, press the notification so you can get notified. Well, when the greatest show on earth comes on, look, look, and the multiverse comes on, look. So I'll see you tomorrow, guys. My name's Shamar Clark. Look, look, I love talking money, love talking crypto. Love talking trading. Oh, bang, I'm about to kill these sons of bitches. Rip some hearts out. I'm going to rip out throats, rip out hearts. Oh, tonight I'm going to slaughter. Yes, the blood will be dripping. Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, I'm sorry. Look, look. So until tomorrow, fuck sticks. Look, look, love you, brothers. Thanks for having me in your home. Bang, my name's Shamar Clark. Love you all. I'll see you tomorrow. Bang, this Shamar Clark, always on duty. Bang, look, look, bang. Yes, and unfortunately for them, I'm always on duty. Bang, over and out. Ha <laughs> ha, yes.